In this edition of Global Print, I'm going to talk to you about the relationship between Pakistan and Israel, not because both are ideological states. You know, dear viewer, that Israel, uh, that the Israelis are a Jewish people, a Jewish nation, a nation that was literally created in 1948 out of the territories uh, of then Palestine. And Pakistan, again, when it became independent, was carved out of India in 1947, a nation for Muslims predominantly, that's why it's called the Islamic Republic of Pakistan. So today I'm talking about this relationship between these two ideological states, Pakistan and Israel, but not only because of that. Uh, uh, some information has come to light that there could be yet another back channel opening up between these two countries that do not recognize each other. But before I go forward and tell you what exactly is going on, let me make an appeal to you, dear viewer. Please do subscribe to the print. Please pay just Rs. 159 for the print's free, fair, objective and unhyphenated journalism. You have helped us through the pandemic. Uh, so I do hope that you will continue to encourage us, to support us, to assist us. It's very little money, Rs. 159 only. So do click on the join button. And as a member, you get privileges and benefits that non-members obviously don't have. Now back to my column, Global Print, on the Print's website in which I talk about this very uh, interesting relationship. Some would call it odd, but I call it interesting relationship between Pakistan and Israel. Like I said earlier, two ideological states. But what is fascinating is that even in this brave new world order, when so much has happened, so much has changed, uh, the Cold War has long been over, uh, at least more than 30 years it's been over, but despite that, these two states do not recognize each other. But why I'm talking about uh, this, uh, this story today is because last week in Davos and Switzerland, where after two long years, after the pandemic years, uh, the, the big jamboree, the big conference where leaders from all over the world, business people, journalists come together and discuss what's going on in the world. It's the largest and most interesting talk shop, if you like. Now, at the Davos conference, the president of Israel, Mr. Isaac Herzog, uh, was asked about the relationship between the Jewish people, between Israelis and the Muslim world. Now, you also know, know dear viewer, that a couple of years ago, when Donald Trump was president of the US, the Abraham Accords were signed between Israel, the UAE, which is the United Arab Emirates, and Bahrain. So both these Gulf nations as well as Israel. Now that was a really big deal because for the first time in several decades, Muslims and Jews, Jewish people were coming together, not just informally, but formally recognizing each other, opening up relations. And that, by the way, has had a huge salutary effect on the Arab world. Uh, I believe that and you know, anecdotal evidence tells you that hordes of Israelis are visiting Dubai, Abu Dhabi, and the other Emirates on holiday. And in fact, uh, people will tell you, if you go to Dubai, you will hear for yourself that Hebrew is perhaps the most uh, common language now after uh, English, the most, the most familiar foreign language, may I add. So the Abraham Accords, a big, big uh, change in the Middle East. And what Mr. Herzog, the Israeli president, was saying is that uh, the, the week previous or some days previous to his visit to Davos, he received two very interesting delegations. The first one was a Pakistani-American delegation uh, and the second one was a Moroccan uh, group of people, so Muslims from Morocco and uh, the delegation, the Pakistani-American delegation, which is what we are interested in. And he said, you know, the words he used are very interesting. He says, for the first time, I, I met this very interesting group of people and it brought home to me that how Muslims and Jewish people can break bread with each other, can talk to each other, begin a conversation about. Now, at this juncture, dear viewer, I'm not going to go into whether or why India, Pakistan are not talking to each other, because if we're talking about breaking bread or breaking the ice, then certainly these two countries, these two neighbors born of the same mother in 1947 can surely open up. A conversation. But right now we're talking about Pakistan and Israel. So here's what Mr. Herzog said, that he received this delegation of Pakistani Americans. He found that they were very, very interesting. And that then set, that those comments of his 
set the cat among the pigeons inside Pakistan. It became such a big story. It blew up all over the place. The opposition, that's Imran Khan's uh, PTI, the Pakistani Tehreek Insaf Party, they got into the act and they accused the ruling party of Shabazz Sharif um, of selling out what the Qaedi Azam Muhammad Ali Jinnah had said you back in 1947 that the uh, that the new state of Pakistan will never recognize Israel until the Palestinians also get a nation of their own. Now, so far, the Palestinians do not have a nation of their own. Uh, in fact, they are uh, reduced to living in the Palestinian territories. Uh, the Gaza Strip is less bad, if you like, than some of the other parts of the so-called Palestine, but certainly the Israeli state and some governments, especially right with governments like the, the previous one of Benjamin Netanyahu, who has not treated them well or fairly. And just one example, even very recently, a month or so ago, the, the Al Jazeera journalist who was shot and killed now it has come to light that she was shot with armor-piercing bullets. So certainly the Israeli state not being fair and honest uh, with the Palestinians. So certainly the Pakistanis have a point. In fact, they're standing on a very high moral ground, which is that it's been over 75 years, but the Pakistanis will not recognize the state of Israel a very powerful nation of only 3 million people supported by the Americans. Um, allegedly, they have a nuclear arsenal as well, just like the Pakistanis have, but at least the Pakistanis are public. The Israelis don't have a... They, they're not out in the open. A very powerful country, as we all know, but the Pakistanis standing on that high moral principle, refusing to recognize Israel uh, until they are... Um, uh, until they equally share the goods with the Palestinians. Now that is certainly not about to happen in the near future, unfortunately, may I add. But meanwhile, what is the what do the comments by Isaac Herzog, the, the, the Israeli president, really mean? What exactly was Isaac Herzog talking about when he said that this Pakistani American delegation that he met was so interesting? Now indeed a lot of the people on that delegation are uh, American citizens of Pakistani origin. But along with them were two Pakistani nationals, the first, a Pakistani Jew called Fishel Ben Khald, and the second, uh, a journalist by the name of Ahmed Qureshi, who works for PTV, which is the state broadcaster. Now, of course, when uh, Mr. Herzog made these comments, it opened a can of worms inside Pakistan. As you can imagine, the opposition, um, especially Imran Khan's party, went to town his former minister, uh, Shirin Mazari, former Minister for Human Rights, immediately criticized the state broadcaster for, for sending somebody like that. And she indicated that something was not really uh, okay, because if a state broadcaster's person was being sent to Israel, then certainly she said there was something black in the lentils, dal me kuch kala hai, literally and indicating that perhaps the Shehbaz Sharif government was changing its position and opening up to Israel. Now, the government panicked. Shehbaz Sharif was going off to Turkey, his third visit in the last two months since he became prime minister, and he certainly doesn't want and did not want to open up another window where he could be challenged again by the opposition. You know that he's being buffeted, that there's been a lot of criticism about the manner in which he's been running the government these last two months. And, and he knows and everybody knows that his is a short-lived temporary sort of government person because elections will be taking place in Pakistan sooner than later. But anyway, uh, Esen Iqbal, the planning minister, a very experienced politician, immediately said, no, there's absolutely no change in Pakistan's position. The Pakistani foreign office issued a statement, no change. And then the information minister, Maria Morangzeb, issued a statement saying that Ahmed Qureshi, the journalist in question with PTV, had been sacked. So there he was, this young man lost his job. So what really is going on? Why is the Pakistani government panicking? Was there really some sort of uh, trial balloon being floated? And uh, what, what is the state of play between Pakistan and Israel? And I think that's what is really interesting. So certainly you can say that there is some truth in what Shirin Mazari said, which is that if somebody from a state uh, institution, in this case PTV, 
is being allowed to go, then perhaps there is some sort of um, testing the waters, shall we say, taking place. Now, you all must also understand that there is a certain context to this. The Pakistani economy is in deep, deep trouble. That's number one. Uh, the Pakistan government has gone to the IMF for, for the time being a bridging loan of $8 billion dollars. Uh, is being given to Pakistan, but that's not going to be enough at all. For a country of 200 million people, that's really pocket change. Something else is also happening. Saudi Arabia, which is perhaps Pakistan's uh, closest and fastest friend, along with China, is also in the act of opening up to Israel. Now, Joe Biden, the US president, is going to undertake a Middle East visit uh, this month in June, in which two stops there will be um, along with other uh, nations. He is going to Jerusalem, which is in Israel, uh, Israel's most important city, and he will be in Riyadh, which is the capital of Saudi Arabia. So there are already talks that Mohammed bin Salman, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia, is paving the way for some sort of opening up with the Jewish state of Israel. So what is this triangle now we're talking about? On the one hand, remember viewers, that I told you about the Abraham Accords in which the UAE, Bahrain and Israel opened up. This was 2020. Now in the middle of 2022, Saudi Arabia is also opening up uh, with Israel. Mohammed bin Salman and the rulers of Dubai uh, and the UAE are very, very close. Mohammed bin Zayed, uh, NBZ as he's known, and MBS, Mohammed bin Salman. They're very, very close to each other. Um, but Pakistan which is, again, um, a, a sort of a client state of uh, Saudi Arabia, along with China, of course, is refusing to get off that high moral ground and open up uh, its ties with Israel. So that is, um, that is the state of play right now. Let me also add that when Shabazz Sharif went to Saudi Arabia uh, a few weeks ago, the Saudis agreed to roll over a $4.2 billion loan that they had given to the Imran Khan government and in fact added some more money. And now uh, there's about $8 billion that the Saudis are offering the Pakistanis. So that's there too. So remember that if the Saudis talk to the Pakistanis, the Pakistani economy is in terrible shape, then perhaps there could be some changes in the background. Now, I'm not saying at all that these changes are about to take place. As you know, there's been a lot of official denials. Remember that the Pakistani economy is in a very weak spot and that perhaps something is brewing in the background. The tea leaves are not ready yet to be cleaned and the tea to be served. So let me just give you a little bit of background of Pakistani-Israel relationship. This is certainly not the first time that this back channel has been uh, sought to be opened. Shireen Bazari, for example, who's made such a fuss that uh, a PTV journalist has been se sent or was sent or wasn't that American Pakistani delegation. When she was the director of the Institute of Strategic Studies in Islamabad, which is a government funded, government controlled institution, this is back, back in the day in 2005, her then boss, and by boss I mean then Foreign Minister Khurshid Kasuri, um, had met the Foreign Minister of Israel, Mr. Silvan Shalom, in Turkey. And that has been the most a public meeting between two senior officials. Um, but guess what? There was one other meeting, 2005, again in New York, then President, Chief of Army, Pervez Musharraf, who was in New York, and he met again the then President of Israel, Ariel Sharon. Very, very important meeting. That was sought to be uh, passed off as a photo op between these two leaders. And in fact, Pervez Musharraf, writes about it in his book. And let me read to you from, uh, from that. And let me read to you a line from there. This is what Parvez Musharraf says. I was standing and he came in a group and shook hands with me. Remember General Parvez Musharraf. He asked me how I was and I asked him how he was. That's very good. But nothing came of, of that meeting because soon after Ariel Sharon went into a coma and two years later, Parvez Musharraf um, was removed because the, the lawyer movement in Pakistan began and then the people of, uh, of Pakistan, um, and, and he fell from favor, if you like. Even earlier, 
there have been some uh, contacts between the Jewish state and the um, Islamic Republic of Pakistan. And most recently in 2020, when the when Azerbaijan and Armenia fought a short conflict, the Israeli army as well as the Pakistani army were both on the side of Azerbaijan. Now that was also really interesting. And you would ask why. One of the reasons for the Israeli side is that perhaps they don't want, um, they didn't want their enemy, Iran, to be able to um, to consolidate the relationship between a brotherly Muslim state. Pakistan, of course, was on the side of this brotherly Muslim state called Azerbaijan. So this is the story. This is the lay of the land, as it were. Uh, all official denial between any kind of opening up, even a very tentative dipping your toes in the water between Pakistan and Israel. But like some would say, there's no smoke without a fire. So perhaps we shall see in the next days and weeks and months what happens to this relationship, because certainly something is brewing in the background, although we don't exactly know it, know what it is. So I would encourage you to read my column, Global Print, on the Print's website and looking forward to hearing uh, what you have to say about this video. Thank you so much for watching.